But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and play you guys some uh, some real Bay Area stuff to get you guys in the mood, man. To get you guys, let you guys know where you at right now. You, you, you are, and let, let me get the uh, hosting capabilities, and then I'm gonna share that screen. Then we'll get the music playing, and that's a good warm up too. Because I mean, this is gonna be the best war room. This might be one of the best war rooms to date. It might be one of the. I, I have a feeling. I have a feeling this is gonna be a good show. It's gonna be very informative. You guys are gonna get a lot of information, a lot of game. I can't share the screen yet. So once I get the sharing capabilities, then we can start it off. But otherwise, all right, if you've never been to the war room, you've probably never seen anything quite like this. Um, but what you're getting ready to experience is basically just a chop it up session. And we get to know all of our guests, find out what their story is like, find out what has necessarily built them up to where they are now. And obviously share some information, share some games, share some tips with us. And then you guys can get a chance to ask questions if there's something that you need clarification on or something that you just want to uh, know about our guests. And today our guest is Angie Curio. She is a long sign Asian extraordinaire. She's also a real estate um, uh, agent, right? Yeah. Yeah, real estate yeah. agent. And she also has a financial services business. So a woman of many talents and very multidimensional but I can't share it yet, so that's all good. But we'll do, the, we'll we'll put, fix that in post. We'll you know put the welcome music on. Um, but uh, if you guys are um, at all interested in the notary public industry, the loan signing agent business, real estate, financial services, you came to the right place. I mean, it's just really that plain and simple. And if you have some notes, go ahead and break out your pen take some information down and hopefully you walk away with a lot of information and some game and you're entertained and this is a uh, good Sunday for you guys. So Angie, first, welcome to the Notary War Room. Um, I want to at least give you the opportunity to explain to everybody, introduce who you are, let us know who are you and give us a, uh, and you can start from the very beginning and bring us all the way up through now, but we want to get to know who you are. So please, <laughs> um, the floor is yours. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you guys for coming and tuning in on this uh, Easter afternoon. I totally missed the, the date. Like, I didn't even pay attention to the date when I chose it. I completely had forgot it was Easter. So ahead of time, my bad, you know, but we're going to make it totally worth it for you guys tuning in. I really appreciate every single one of you guys coming in and tuning in to find out a little bit about me, uh, just an, another little notary out here doing her thing. Um, my name is Angie. I was born um, in Richmond. I was born in Oakland, raised in Richmond. Um, and <laughs> I see it. I see it. The town over there. <laughs> and so um, I moved over here to Central Valley, which is a little town named Newman. Um, in 2005, we, you know, ventured out here, we seen these huge houses, you know, kind of like how we look at Texas and we're like, yeah, let's go move over there. They got some good prices over there on those beautiful houses. That was kind of what we, what we did when we moved to Central Valley. We seen a lot of value in the homes and everything. Um, and that was the start of my entrepreneurship. Um, we soon opened a Metro PCS store within that year of moving here. Um, so I owned the Metro PCS store for from 2006 all the way to 2012 when T-Mobile kind of took over and they changed a lot of the things that they um, they had going on. Uh, Metro, you know, started uh, kind of pushing more quotas and you know, there, it just became more of a corporate type of company. And it was really hard for us to stay up on it um, in a little town in comparison to big companies. So we decided to, you know, shut it down 
And by that time, I had already took on the business of being a makeup artist. So um, I did very well doing that and hustling jewelry. So I was selling accessories um, at vendor events and just different type of networking events that they allowed vendors to go to. So, you know, I, I dipped into that for, for a couple years after. And then COVID hit. Um, oh, no. Then I became a cosmetologist. I went to school, got my license, became a cosmetologist, worked at a salon. And then COVID hit. Mm. Shut it down for us. And, you know, I had a pivot. Um, there was, at that time, I was like, my hands are tied. We can't have no kind of uh, communication with the public. We can't interact. We can't do much. So, you know, I reached out to a friend uh, just, you know, asking her, hey, girl, you know, I see a lot of these mortgage relief things. Um, I don't foresee myself using it right now, but, you know, how do you feel about it? And she was like, no, girl, do not touch your mortgage. I need help. We have a refinance boom going on in our office. I need you to come work for us. And I was like, okay, bet, let's go. So I, uh, you know, I started the very next day. She's like, I'll show you everything you need to know to assist me as a loan officer. Um, it was pretty much a loan officer assistant throughout the whole time I was there. And then I met a girl named Vettel, who she was the one training me. And um, I always had it in my heart to be a notary, but I didn't ever search it up to see what it took me to become a notary. It was just kind of like always put on the back burner. But, you know, I even just recently found a letter that I remember writing, I want to get my notary license. And it was back in like 2006. Um, so when I went there, I seen that the loan officer had um, always delegated the signings over to the other loan officer that was in house who also had her notary license. And I'm like, oh, my God, girl, I really love, you know, what you're doing. Can I like shadow you? Can I just sit into your signings? And she was like, girl, I'll teach you how to do them. She was like, come on, let's let, come on with me. And since we had so many refis and we had that connection directly with title to be allowed to, to notarize the documents, um, she, she was like teaching me every single file that closed was every single file that, um, <laughs> what did Mike Lean say? Angie is the HPIC. <laughs> um, <laughs> and taught me. So she's like, okay, girl, we need you to uh, get your license. And she was the one who pushed me to get the license so that she's like, you know, I'll, we'll start splitting up the signings. Every signing we got was always $200. It was a few that we got at 300, but they're mostly all were 200. And she's like, I'll start splitting them with you for now. But once you get your license, that's all you girl. And I was like, oh my goodness. I started seeing how it started pouring in. I started building good relationships with title companies. They started getting familiar with me because I was bilingual and they needed a lot more bilingual uh, notaries in our area. So, um, you know, we was just popping. We were busy uh, nonstop and till late hours of the night sometimes. And um, so, yeah, so she, Veto encouraged me to go get my, my license. And um, I found a big passion in the notary side of things and not so much the lending. The lending is good. I like the information. It's useful and all that, but I don't foresee myself being a loan officer. Um, the notary was always one of those things that I just kind of like, I was always attracted to. So um, as the years progressed, um, I started seeing that I was very busy. So I decided to part ways with the company I was working for um, and just, strictly dedicate myself to be doing notary work. Um, so I went on my adventure to do my own notary thing and then boom, interest rates started going up, you know, loan signings started coming down a little bit. And, you know, I really just started to think like, okay, so what's next? In the meantime, um, I am still a makeup artist. So I'm still doing this on the side. Um, so I'm still, I'm still working, but I'm like, I got to figure out something else. So I started doing a lot more networking events and 
talking to people and getting to know them so they can trust me and um and and uh in their signings and then me and my man um came across a challenge that was presented to us um from a friend of ours to do the 75 hard challenge um it's it's a very very um it's a mental like more of a mental challenge than a physical challenge um uh what is it like a program i'm not sure if people are familiar with that but um, yeah for those who don't know explain to them what the 75 hard challenge is 75 hard challenge basically is um it you have a few tasks that you have to conquer in the day you have to read a book 10 pages a day. You have to um, do two workouts a day, one indoors and one outdoors. And then you have to drink a gallon of water. Um, and then you have to, what else am I missing? You have to do the book, the workouts, the water, oh, follow a strict diet, um, no alcohol. And I mean, that's already a, a lot of the things. I don't think there was anything more than that, but those are all the ones that were on there. Follow the diet. Yes. So, so follow the diet. For me, it was very, very hard because I'm a piggy at heart. I, I love food. <laughs> I, I will say, I will never say no to food. Food is my, is my, my everything. So it was challenging. I never drank water. I uh, was, I was overweight. Um, I never really read a book besides passing, like studying courses and stuff, but sitting down to actually read a book. Um, I hadn't, I hadn't read a book in a long time, I think since college. Um, so uh, one thing that came about that, besides all the great benefits of just your mind shifting to a, just another, a different you, um, was that you're constantly, your mind's constantly working. You're working out and your mind's working. You're reading and your mind's working. And so through the day, your mind's constantly working. So once we started that, I was like, okay, so I need to figure out a new plan of things. I'm doing these networking events. No one's really giving me, I'm not getting many signings from them. Um, you know, I repost realtors, I do their open houses, I take the cookies and cupcakes to the title companies. And I was like, fuck that. I'm going to make myself the connect because there is just no way that I'm going to continue, in a sense, kissing ass to get signings. And at that point, you know, we are already started seeing the change of the prices on signings. Some of them started dropping. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that no more. So I have always had it. I took real estate back in high school. We, I went to a college and a high school at the same time. But at that time, my mind wasn't right. It was a lot. And I dropped out. So I said, I'm going to become the connect. I'm going to go ahead and make myself a realtor so that all the people that I network with and my notaries, I can assign them my signings and it stays in house. So from that, Limitless Financial Services was born. So I don't, you can't really see it, but uh, I'm currently in my office. I said, I'm going to open an office. I'm going to um, bring all financial services to this office. I had a vision that just came about. Um, my husband does, he's a financial coach. I'm getting my license here soon to become a financial coach myself. Um, and we have a loan officer here in house. So any, any loans that come about, um, we delegate it to the loan officer in house. And in return, they send us either the notary signings to myself or as a realtor, I represent them as a realtor. Um, and then vice versa, I, I'll send them. And it's, a, it's like a one-stop shop here. Um, when the financial services was presented to me, the person that I spoke to literally has became our mentor since. Um, he opened up my eyes to just another world of more possibilities. And, you know, I know that a lot of notaries, when they sit down and they have a client in front of them, most of the time they'll bring up something that has a, something to do with a trust or a will or power of attorney, um, things that require an attorney to handle, right? 
So when we were introduced to financial services within that connection, there is now, uh, there's uh, in-house attorneys that now we have under Limitless as well, that now we can offer this to the community and have um, an in-house attorney help them with their trust, powers of attorney, um, wills. And of course, uh, I get the notary signing for any of those clients that we refer out. Um, so uh, this is where we are now. We're at Limitless Financial. Um, it's been doing so good since we've opened. Um, I passed, I successfully passed my real estate license. My husband got his financial coaching license. Um, and then we have some affiliates that we work with. So we also have a um, in-house credit repair specialist. So anyone who comes in the door that wants a loan, or possibly uh, wants to buy a house and they have credit issues, we can send them to our in-house um, credit specialist. And then uh, we also have another affiliate uh, partner that you, anyone who needs automobile insurance, um, I'm able to handle them as well. I'm kind of like that middleman. And um, yeah, if we, we're, we just com continue to build limitless <laughs> possibilities in here right see i hope you guys i told you guys didn't i tell you guys i told you i hope <laughs> you're taking notes if you follow the journey along the entire way where she started high school college and and being exposed to these environments where being in a loan origination or the loan officer environment and then being introduced to the notary industry and then that also progresses into uh, where you currently are, financial services or real estate and then financial services. So, and then also being a, a, a small business owner in your own right with the um, uh, cosmetology industry and then the phone industry. Now, let me ask you this. So again, I hope you guys got all that and just understand who you're speaking to today. That's really <laughs> fascinating. That, that's a, how, what would you tell to, what would you say for notaries who, um, Put it this way, when people get introduced to this industry, um, there is a language that must be spoken. There is a, an approach that they must have. And sometimes people, um, loan signing agents are really notorious for this because it is, it might be their first time stepping off of a corporate environment, stepping out of that environment where they've had a traditional nine to five, but now they're suddenly finding themselves working for themselves. Now, what would you, uh, again, when you walk into the industry, it was popping, right? It was buzzing. And then all of a sudden it shifts and then it changes. Then you have to kind of pivot. What, what kind of approach would you, um, would you tell people who are, who may, who might be going through what you're, what you went through, you know, what, they're kind of in that environment right now. Um, what would you tell them to look out for? Um, there is unlimited, limitless, possibilities of um of of using your license um in many other um areas just continue with your drive um if it's not working with the loans then there's always um the what is it the senior living homes that you can go advertise to. Um, when I was introduced to the financial um, services aspect, that one opens a big old window of yes. possibility for you to network with attorneys, with CPAs, with, um, what is it, with more realtors that are involved in that same industry and doctors. Like I've met police officers, doctors, attorneys, nurses, all of them, they're, you'd be surprised. They're all in that network of financial services doing similar things. So definitely um, look into uh, different different uh, avenues. So, you know, the healthcare, you can go to hospitals and advertise. You could go, um, if you're bilingual, that's a big old advantage as well, because they're constantly looking for bilingual notaries. Um, I think that that's one of the things that helps me stand out that I am bilingual and I'm able to help, you know, that community or that group that, you know, they're constantly looking for a notary, but you know, no one speaks Spanish. So whatever makes you stand out, 
um, I think that you should really um, embrace that and use that. Um, getting yourself out there to networking events, whatever it is, you'd be surprised making that right connection with the right person is going to open doors that you would have never thought would open for you. And for me, um, that's what happened. You know, I, now I'm in a totally different place. I'm not the same person I was back in October when, when I, I started my adventure, like I started 75 part in October. Um, and, and, and then I opened Limitless Financial Services in January. And um, my husband got licensed in February for financial services. I got licensed in real estate in February. Um, and we have also the solar, we got into the solar game too. So we are partnered up with the solar company, both my husband and I, we both have licenses for that now. And uh, through that, you know, we've gotten connections from leads, just leads that that will come for real estate, credit repair, uh, some notary signings. Um, everyone needs financial services. You'd yeah. be surprised people are not um, knowledgeable of, of the financial literacy that they need to, to be on game with. And I'm all ears when it comes to that. I'm, I'm not, I'm trying to break that, you know, that, that generational curse that we had. I'm trying to make a different, a, a difference, at least for my kids so that when they grow up, they have something proud to say, my mama set me up cool. My mama set me up with this, this, and this. And right now, the most latest thing I've learned about is an IUL. I had zero knowledge once upon a time of what an IUL was. Talking and, about indexes, y'all. When somebody starts talking about indexes, you start, whenever the word index comes up, you notice how people start perking up. People start, mm, indexes. <laughs> oh, you know about indexes? Oh, well, just, let me tell you. Let me, all right. That, so it's, it's people a, who don't know about indexes, you had that same sort of light bulb moment on the same. Uh, yeah. Response. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. Say that one more time, and I've gotten it repeated over and over and over and again. I, I just want to make one big shout out to the one person who really woke me the fuck up, and that's Irvin Samsu. He's my mentor, and he is, you know, he's been in the industry for over 20 years as a financial coach. And, you know, learning the business, learning the products, learning what value it brings to people and how people just shut it off sometimes and how it's our job to bring the knowledge to them, whether they want to take it or not at that point, that's up to them. But I know for myself personally, my kids are set. When they, when they're 18 or when they're 21 or whenever they want to touch their IUL, I know that they are going to be able to purchase a house by themselves using their funds that I contributed into, go to pay for their college themselves if they choose to. I, I, my, me personally, I have a different belief about college, um, but if they choose that they want to do that, by all means, and if they want to buy an investment property, a duplex, triplex, like you know, educating our kids to be set for the future is my major goal. And that's my why of why I'm doing everything that I do, why I'm dipped in all this sauce that I'm dipped in right now, because I want to make sure that the day that I die, them kids are set. They're not going to struggle. They're not going to need to be working for some other for some other person, some other corporation. Hey, hey this is a war room. You can go ahead and let it out. It's all good. Yes, I'm like, no, my kids are not going to be those kids. We're, we're breaking the generational curse and, um, you know, and at least give them a little, a little boost to get started. And um, I, I, I can't say that I came from like, you know, a broke family or a poor life. Like I, you know, I didn't struggle by all means, but um, it still, it still kind of taught me that the hustle is where it's at. My daddy owned a bar for over 20 years and I seen him, I seen his work, his worth ethics, what he did every single day to get us what we had. And I, he was my, he was my, uh, role model. I, I, I looked up to that. I said, I'm going to be that person for my kids too. And he didn't have friends that 
I now have. He didn't build that network of people that, you know, I now have. You know, uh, he owned a bar. The people that were at bars were from the mafia or <laughs> drug dealers. You know, all they all they was worried about is making that fast money, right. but they didn't have nobody in the circle teaching them, you know, what to do with this money, how to how to build something with this money that's so risky already as it is that life they live or to set their kids up at least, you know, if something was to happen, if they went to jail or whatnot. Um, they didn't have nobody in that circle of friends. And, you know, your circle of friends is is very powerful in your success. And I'm a firm believer of it because I'm witnessing it right now. And like I said, my mentor is the one who taught me a lot of what I'm learning now on the business side of stuff. I mean, no one ever even told me what royalty income was. I was like, royalty income? What? What's royalty income? And he's like, you know, um, have you ever heard, you know, Mariah Carey songs getting played every holiday season? That girl's getting paid to this day for the song she made X amount of years ago. That's royalty income. He goes, and in financial services, it's one of the only ones, one of the probably like a few, what, three or four that you can make royalty income off of and he's like i'm gonna teach you how to create a business that you are gonna make royalty income and boom like my mind just keeps like expanding and expanding i said okay building a team definitely build yourself a team leverage their time leverage their talents there's there's things where i lack that, you know, um, like social media, I'm not really good at it. As you may tell my social media, like, I don't really have too much on there. It's kind of like, ugh, you know, missing a little something. Um, so I'm building towards that. I'm still trying to grow. I'm still trying to get into uh, marketing and social media. Like that's my weak point. Um, but building a team and uh, having a good strategy behind your business so that you don't physically have to be present to make money. That's my love language. We're now we're talking because we're only going to get older, right? We're, I don't see myself being a notary at like 60 years old or 70. I'm trying to be with my grandkids and, or traveling the world in the beaches somewhere. I don't know, but I'm not trying to be physically working to make money. I want to get them deposits in my bank every single week off of what I've built. And, um, and you can do that with real estate. You could do that with financial services. You could do that with your notary uh, license too. You can build a finding system. Um, we have, he said, if you don't make money while you sleep, what did he say? I, I missed the, I missed yeah, the comment. You can, if you don't make money while you sleep, you will work until you die, which is a that's, true statement. That's, the, that is the truth, Mr. Warren Buffett. Uh, you it's know. a principle that we, that is, uh, is tried and true. And um, it's unfortunate that some people won't realize that until it's, I mean, you can never say it's too late, but it takes some of us longer to understand that than others. And um, just FYI, um, um, Angie is, you know, or I, for full disclosure, I am licensed by the uh, state of California and the Department of Insurance to talk about things like indexes. So Angie, uh, you know, so we can <laughs> legally share these strategies, right? We can, we can legally, and literally talk about these things. And as you know, um, people who are not uh, you know, licensed by the state of California or the respective state in the Department of Insurance to certain to like give out advice, so to speak, right? Yeah. So yeah. we can talk about these things. And it's important that um, you <laughs> mentioned something about mentorship. You also talked about you know being introduced to this to all these, like your circle. And let me ask you this. Um, what does it mean to be the plug? Like when you say that, I want it to be the plug because it sounds like something that you thought about for a long time and maybe you told somebody, maybe you didn't, but you always internally knew that you wanted to be the person who was kind of directing traffic and at least connecting people, bringing them together. What does, 
being the plug mean? What, what kind of significance does that actually take on? It's literally everything because to be the plug, everybody wants to come to you because you got the sauce, you got what they want, you got what people are talking about or, or, or what they need. So being the direct plug to me is yes, having, being the first person they thought about when they thought about real estate, when they thought about notary services, when they thought about um, financial services, a trust, um, or anything that has to do with their financial needs, that Angie's the plug, that that's, that's literally like a goal that I think everyone should have as a business owner to be that, the plug, the plug that has all the different portals to different people somehow, some way through you. And mm -hmm. that somehow you're profiting from being that plug, not the middleman, the plug. Because the middleman, they get in, they get in a little bit of the cut, but they ain't getting the whole the whole whole profit from that. You know what I mean? I I want that all. I want it all. That's right. That's right. And um, <laughs> when you learn how to be the plug, or when you learn how the differences between being middleman and also being the source and being the connect, and um, you also talked about. Um, you talked about generational curses, you talk about breaking those things, and you talk about trust, which is something that is, you know, is, um, you know, as a notary, you probably encounter this. You see this on a, I definitely see it on a weekly basis. You see people who they always say, Angie, no one told me that I needed this. No, no one told me that I'm trying to handle my uncle's affairs who's in a retirement home or a nursing facility. And they, no one, my mom never told me this. My grandparents never told me this so you are now that person and and we talk about breaking generational curses and 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 putting these getting these affairs in place and getting things in order where does that come from how did you even how did that even come about like how did you uh be introduced to you know trust poas uh, these documentations and now you're on this um this uh, crusade to help out your community, help your family, like where does that come from? Well, um, first and foremost, I've always been like a servant of the community. So I always am, have been the person that wants to help, help with anything and everything. Um, the, the trust and power of attorneys, everything like that had to do with the state signing, I learned from um, Rafaniel. He's another notary here in Central Valley. Uh, he has a uh, stamper, I want to say stamper signings. He has a business in, I believe he's located in Stockton. Um, so I connected with him. I noticed he was in one of the networking rooms that I, that I tuned into. Uh, where was it? I don't really remember, but I remember connecting with him. I said, hello, I seen your, your zip code. Um, no, actually, you're, yeah, I, I seen his number, I think it was. And I was like, are you from Central Valley? Like, where are you located? And he goes, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm located here. I think he says Stockton. And then I was like, oh, so what do you do? And he's like, I have my own signing service. And we, we really, um, we specialize in estate planning and signings. And I was like, oh, what is that? I've never really heard of that. And he's the one who introduced me into that world of how to do estate planning, estate planning signings, took his courses and all of that. And I really, really liked it because when you're someone who truly cares for people and the community and the people you surround yourself with, all this information that you get, you want to spread it out to everyone and let everyone know like you need to have a trust if you don't got a trust let me tell you the amount of problems you are going to encounter if you don't have it yeah you might have a written will but you still got to go to probate did you know that because that will is going to defend you to a certain extent but you still got to go to probate and cash out and pay you know all these extra couple thousands just to get the rights over whatever it is you're fighting for so when I found out all that information, I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, I need to learn more. Tell me more. And so that's where that first initially started. And I did have clients already at that time asking me, do you know anyone who does trust? Do you know anyone who does wills? I think it's more 
the wills that was more of a common mentioned uh, topic than the trusts. I think no one really knew too much about trusts, but they knew about wills. Mm -hmm. And so it was great. It was great to know all that information. And um, I, I totally blocked, blacked out. Like, what, what are we, what are we getting? What's the next uh, question? Nah, keep flowing, keep flowing because we, we yeah, got so some. I got into that. That's how I got into that. And then with the financial services, when I met my mentor, he told me that we had some in-house attorneys that we can use for estate planning. And that was just music to my ears. And then they were like, well, part of our organization, actually, you get paid for referring clients to our attorneys. And I was like, oh, what? And he's like, yes. And then you can notarize them and then you'll get paid again. And I was like, tell mm -hmm. me more. Tell me more. <laughs> Angie, how do you know she boss? Oh, my God. That girl who doesn't know her, first of all, if you're a notary and you don't know who she is, you, you're, you're, you've been under a rock. Because this girl, I met her just through my, my interactions with different notaries and following different people on social media, the pop and notaries, you know, the best notaries. And when I first found her page, man, I mean, everyone can feel what I feel when we see her live posts, like just the day in the life chronicles of Miss Griselle. And it's just someone I relate with because it's just the, the content she puts out there is so raw. And she's not out there to get over on people when you're in search of resources to make yourself a better notary. Um, and that to me was everything because everybody out here is trying to upcharge to the ass about any little thing. You ask a little bit of information, give me 200, give me 300. And so with her, when, when I seen her, um, all her social media stuff, I started commenting on it and she like, like just as a normal person should, you know, acknowledge the comment or the message. And we connected from there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we're so much alike because her vibes are just like th the best vibes. You cannot like not like her. And she gives you like gems left and right. I've taken some, uh, I took some of her classes before and she just said she was gonna discuss certain things, but then boom, you just had like a shitload of stuff given for free. And I was like, oh my God, I wasn't ready for all of this. And then she'll shoot you an email after like, this is what we spoke about. This is some extra templates that you could use. And so I've always, always supported her because she has something that stands out that I feel, you know, I, yes, that, that is Griselle, y'all. If y'all ain't following Griselle, I don't know, man. I don't know where y'all been, but um, what was I saying? Uh, well, she wants to ask you a question. She wants to know um, what a, if you could change one thing about this entrepreneurship journey, if you can change one thing, what would it be? Nothing. I feel like my, my my struggles have built and given me a lot more drive to get to where I'm at. Cause you're always gonna get fucking haters. Some people even think that you think that they're your friends and that they're guiding you in the right direction, but they don't have the best intention for you. So I feel that I, I wouldn't change anything. Um, I mean, I guess if I could buy back time and learn about this stuff five years ago instead of instead of venturing off in these other little businesses that I'm always dipped into. If I would have started there and followed my heart, like in high in high school, that I took my real estate class and I would have followed it through, maybe that would have just been the, the main thing I would have changed. But a lot of my struggles now have built me to be where I'm at. Um, and then surrounding myself with just the right network of friends, people who are there to build you and, and see your potential and want to see you grow and can actually genuinely cheer for you is something else that, you know, sometimes your circle of friends, um, they, there's some little snakes in there sometimes, you know, and 
And you think you look to look up to some of them thinking, okay, they're doing great. I'm, I'm sure being right there by her side, I'm going to be there too. But chances are, mm, it's not that way. And I, I have a big thing. I, loyalty is big to me. Loyalty is really big to me. And there were times that I should have walked away from things, but my loyalty kept me there. And, you know, through entrepreneurship, I feel that that was one of the things that your feelings cannot be attached to a lot of what you have going on. Um, don't yeah. get your involved because your feelings will get hurt. Yeah. Speaking of uh, feelings and loyalty, uh, there's a question about having team members. Do you have employees? And if so, uh, people on your team, are they family members or non-family members? And if they're not, then how do you go about working with people that are in your circle, in your area, or in your uh, in your immediate notary circle, or even your other businesses? Do you have family members who work with you? If not, um, what are the criteria? And um, you know, how do you go about selecting people to decide, hey, this is a person I can work with. How do you do that? Okay, so... I have always wanted to have like my circle of friends. Like I'm so like, come here guys, let's do this together. And, and, and I've always wanted, I always like being around people like big, large groups and stuff like that. Yes, I do have um, a team in the different, um, the different businesses that are within Limitless Financial Services. Um, Recently, this year, I've learned a lot more value in building a team than I ever have known before, right? Um, I do have family in uh, one of, I have family in two of the businesses. Mm -hmm. um, so in the notary services, I have my sister-in-law, and then I have one of my, uh, one of the co-workers that I was working with at the loan officer, at the loan office. Um, pretty much everyone who's in-house are somehow my friends. And I wanna to continue to build more and more and more on my teams. Um, building a team, if you do your research, every business encourages you to build a team for many reasons. There is override benefits, you can leverage their time so that you can, it can open your time up to do other things. I highly encourage every single one of you guys to build a team um, and a force that, you know, that is unmatched. Um, build a team of people who bring different qualities to your team. Someone who's right now I'm trying to get someone who's good at marketing and social media. And, you know, I have a, I have a, freaking mic that I couldn't connect today because I, I, I don't, I'm clueless. I'm clueless on how to do these things, but building a team is great. I don't mind having family. Everyone has to have the same drive, same vision. And if they don't, I feel sometimes it's my duty to at least try to teach them what I know and everything that I know and the why behind everything I know and hopefully they, I can give them value. But I do have family. My husband is my, my business partner, my best friend, my supporter. If I didn't have him, I couldn't probably do half of the things that I do. Um, so we work side by side, my husband and I. He, um, he's actually the one who came up with the name Limitless Financial mm -hmm. Services. Um, so he's my rock. Um, but yes, we do have a lot of, a lot of people in house that work with us in different teams on the solar team. We have four people. Um, my notary team has four people. I'm building on my real estate team. Um, my financial services team has nine. Uh, I think maybe we have 10 already. Um, Financial services has 10. And then what else am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something. I look back on my notes. Um, but yes, building a team. Who asked that question? <laughs> you know, there's um Don out of Notary Nation. She asked that question. And um, I think you did a good job answering it. But um, you know, if anybody else has questions, you because we're streaming live on YouTube, we're streaming live on Instagram. Hi. We're 
Yeah, throw your questions up and, uh, you know, let Angie know, show some love. She's coming here from Newman, California, West Coast. She's here to drop some game for you guys. All right. Every, um, every single I found, they build, they do, a, they have good models about building a team. And um, I am someone who likes to share everything and anything that I know. Every single time that I find something out, I'm always trying to share that knowledge. So I feel that I'm a good, I, I'm, I'm at a good position to where I can build a team. But when I do get people to join, I always tell them, you're not under me. You're not, I'm, I'm not above you. We're all leaders in this. We are all building a business with the notaries. Although I do send them signings, they're leaders. They're their own bosses. They're, they run their own business. And with real estate is the same thing. Anyone who would be jumping on board. Everyone runs their own business. I'm just trying to build leaders and hang out and kick it with leaders. Everyone's on the same level here. No one's below, no one's above. We're all at the same level. So when I invite someone to an opportunity, um, I always say I'm looking for leaders. I'm not saying I'm looking to build a team or anything like that. I'm looking for leaders who have the same vision, the same goals as I do because I don't want to be working anymore from here in the next 10 years. Like I'm about to be 40 soon. Nobody wants to work all, you know, all their life. I want to build and I'm sure everyone has the same vision. I'm sure everyone has the same goals. So with whatever I have, all my ammo over here that I have, if I can help them achieve their goals, that would be a mission accomplished. And it's, it's fulfilling to see people grow out of their shells. Yeah. Well, let me speaking of growing out of your shell. Let me ask you this: more of a personal question. Um, what What is it that scares you? Uh, I'm from Richmond. <laughs> Nothing really scares us. Um, what? For those who don't know, Richmond is it. You like Oakland has a reputation, but Richmond now that's a reputation. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit more rough in Richmond. Um, I, let me think, let me think. What scares me? Scares me. My weakness is my kids. So anything that has to do with my family, um, I feel, I feel that's what scares me. If I'm not like 100% protecting them or being there, there for them, that's, that's the only thing that scares me because I'm telling you, after 75 hard, everybody got to try. Everybody has to try that challenge. At least attempt to try it because it changes you mentally. It makes you mentally strong. You, if you put your mind to absolutely anything you put your mind to, you will achieve it. Like you will achieve it. You can even say, "I'm gonna become the president." Like you will. I, I don't. I choose not to become the president. I don't want to become the president. No, but no. no. <laughs> Day, like literally I said, I'm going to open a business. I'm going to open an office. Boom. We got it. I'm going to become a realtor. Boom. I got it in a month. I'm going to, anything that I've ever said that I wanted to do, I did it. My fee, I, I'm not even scared of failing to be honest, because I know that those are roller coasters that we have to take at some point in time. And it's going to build us to, or teach us something in that failure. So I understand that failing teaches you things. So that's why I'm not too scared about failing or I'm not too scared about much, but I do fear anything that has to do with family. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. What could be some examples of people's fears? And I could second it if I, I would feel that that would be a fear. A lot of people, people are afraid of a lot of things. They're afraid of dogs, the dark. <laughs> They're afraid of... <laughs> the dark. <laughs> You know, a lot of people are afraid because you talked about, you know, marketing, right? You talked about getting in front of the camera and social media. And I don't know what you, what do you think about this? If you're not doing social media today, then you might as well be a dinosaur. Are yeah. You and you know what's crazy? Um, I, we, me and Griselle spoke about that a little bit um, because she's like, girl, we, we ha I have to help you a little bit on your social media because it is, you know, lacking. But um uh mysteriously or i don't know what you would call, call it like a blessing but i'm still successful with social media or not by word of mouth 
I've built my reputation to be where it's at now. If you ask anybody about me, um, they won't have much bad to say about me besides maybe, yeah, I defend mines. I, I might get a little ghetto if I have to fight for my kids just the other week. You know, we was at, no, it wasn't a week ago. It was probably like a couple games ago. My son started, my two sons started playing baseball. And I said, I can't come to these baseball games no more because I'm going to fucking go crazy on somebody. And, um, you know, it, it's obviously little eight-year-olds playing, right? But right. little kid went to, you know, when, you, when you're going to tag somebody, you, you know, you tag them out or you just run and you tag, right? Well, the little kid went and just like straight pushed my son and, as he's like, you know, racing to the first base. And I'm like, fuck that shit. Next time you got to get up and you got to get up and push that fucking kid back. I don't care. And right. so there's parents next to me just cracking up, right? And I'm like, I can't. I'm, I'm a business person now. I need to act right. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> um, so I, I have a little bit of challenges with that. And, and that's probably what somebody would say about me, that you, she's a person that you can't really try. So don't try me, but I'm an amazing person at heart as well. I have a lot of heart. So, um, back to the social media and back to my marketing. I know it needs help. I know that we're going to, we're going to work with that. Right. But my business has been successful with or without it. I can only imagine how much more successful it could be. Right. Um, and then now also leveraging the building of the teams that they do their share of advertising for, for limitless financial, you know, it, the work's getting out more, but I take big pride that a lot of my, um, a lot of my business is organically walking in through the door because they've heard of me or someone recommended me. Um, but but I'm not saying marketing is bad because marketing is amazing. It is like a major tool in every business's uh, success. So I do got to jump on that. I got to get on game like Griselle. Her marketing is amazing. And she does some extraordinary things with Etsy and Canva and just like her social media is amazing. Her, her, her website is amazing. I, you know, I'm getting there. I'm getting there slowly, but surely catch me in about a year. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so why real estate? Is that, your, um, and let me ask you this. I'm asking from a, um, I'm asking from a perspective of somebody who obviously I'm a notary public as well. I tend to shy away personally from real estate related transactions and so forth. Not that I'm afraid of it. I just, I just choose not to because of the way that I go about doing it. Um, I also noticed that a lot of uh, notaries are just uh, genuinely interested in being involved with the real estate industry. And maybe that in some capacity, whether they want to be an investor, whether they want to be a, a broker or they want to and be a realtor. I'm not sure how, but the capacity want to they, they want to own apartment buildings and be commercial property owners. But let me, what is this affinity for real estate that a lot of notaries who find themselves in loan signing agent positions? What can you kind of give us some insight into what you were thinking and like? I think sort of I think. I mean, I don't know for them, right? But I, I have many reasons. And some of the most recent ones change. So I'm going to go with the main reason. The main reasons I've always had the passion for real estate and getting people into like their first time home, like their first purchase, like that moment. For me, that's fulfilling to be part of that transaction that I was the agent who helped them get into their first home. Showing houses is obviously like, you know, it, it looks like so much fun, right? It really truly is something that I like, you know, look forward to is showing a home and describing the home and the details and dressing up just for that, you know, for those moments. Um, so, and that part, it is actually something that in my heart, I, I like, I truly like doing it. It's not more like work. It's something that I actually like doing. Um, 
the second one, it was obviously making, uh, being part of that moment for the families that are getting into a home, searching for homes or whatnot. The third part is for investments as well for myself, because I do plan on at least owning two apartment complexes at some point in my life. That's one of my goals on my, my vision board um, to own at least one or two apartments that have like eight units or more. So for, for financial reasons and retirement reasons and, and then leaving something for my kids type of reasons too. And then very last one was because it's part of being the connect for all the other businesses I have in Limitless. So with real estate, everything can piggyback off of it. You know, everyone needs solar. Real estate, you can get build a connection with that client and say, well, I also offer solar. I, I have a notary who can notarize your documents. I have an in-house attorney that can help you um, with your trust now that you own an asset. We got to make sure that is secured. So I got an in-house attorney. Um, what else do we have? Uh, the loan officers, if, you know, if somehow someone needs a loan, well, we start with the loan and then come over to the real estate. So they piggyback off of each other. Um, what else am I missing? Well, we have the, the, my business partner, Carla, she owns an auto and home insurance company out of Richmond. So she would be the one I would send my clients to, to get their, uh, homeowner's insurance. So real estate has like all of these little streams, you know, kind of all these, what are they called? Venticles kind of coming out of it. Um, so on the business side of things, I felt real estate was one of the strong points that I needed to make sure I stayed hard going hard on because that network of people is going to eventually need something within limitless financial services. Yeah. So me on the business aspect of stuff, it was going to continue to drive some income into this business because eventually I, after I build these teams, I do want to create offices in different locations that are very similar to this one stop shop I have here. Do you find it's hard to talk, talk to people about these type of topics, these kind of, these, these new ideas, these, these uh, documents, these, these, um, you know, these concepts, do you find it's difficult to talk to people about this stuff? Sometimes, sometimes, but once you start surrounding yourself around a different crowd of people who know how to continue that conversation and they're intrigued and, you know, there can be like a nice conversation. Once you surround yourself with those people, um, the ones who don't really pay attention don't stop mattering at that point. So I've, I've actually started to, you know, build good relationships with people, you know, outside of my circle of friends now that I can actually now have nice conversations with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, it, you know, I, I, I agree with you 100%. And uh, sometimes it can be a challenge because you don't want to just push anybody and everybody away but you 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 tend to build this filter right you can kind of sense that some people are kind of about that life and some people just you know just in one ear out the other so don't even like waste your time but yeah, uh, yeah. kind of fill it out you definitely fill out the vibes of who's interested and who's not and um you know i just i'm so busy with what i'm doing i i'm usually hanging out with the ones who do want to hear about it so uh for those that don't i spend very small amount of time with them if it's someone that's like very close to me or family you only spend about an hour or two with them just talking about just family and just personal things and other than that but that's it where before I, I was always hanging out with girls, all my girls wanted to drink and party and go to the clubs and the bars. And, yeah. you know, you start learning really soon. That ain't going to get you nowhere. <laughs> True indeed. True indeed. Well, uh, amongst all the information that you've shared with us, um, again, please come off mute if you have any questions, any questions for the illustrious Angie Curio. She's definitely uh, uh, graceful enough to, uh, you know, give us some of this insight and then expose us to a lot of the new um, ways that multiple industries can intersect and how you can take advantage of those. So is that, look who we got, we got a question here? Go ahead. 
Hey, y'all talk about those IULs. What's that? <laughs> The IULs. She wants to hear. She wants to hear about the IUL. <laughs> oh, you don't know about indexes? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, the secrets. Ooh, they got secrets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Indexes for um, uh, I mean, I'll let Angie definitely go ahead into detail, but um, for, from a very basic explanation, so your money grows in several different ways, and um. When you understand how money grows in terms of indexes, meaning uh, an account is created and then the growth of the account is based upon how it performs. And then it you compare that to the next year, how it performs, and then it could, the next year how it performs, and it can either grow up and it and it won't, you know, you won't necessarily lose money, or um, there's a floor for which you can um, lose money. And this is very safe, safe and um, uh, I wouldn't say predictable growth, but it's definitely uh, more, um, it's not like we were talking about the casino earlier or on where you can win a dollar and then you can lose $20,000 and then you have to make up another $40,000. Uh, indexes are basically accounts that, um, these are policies, right? These are insurance policies and these are um, um, you know, other products that, that essentially grow based upon how something like the S&P 500 or a, a, some, something like an index like that grows. So it's-, it's Dang, you, yeah. did, you did a great explanation of that one. That one was- How was that? How was that? That, that was okay? That was good. Now, okay. so who, who are you with? Who are you doing your financial services with um, now that you said you have your license? Yeah. Uh, who, who, do you have, who do you hang your license with? Yeah, so this is not about me, y'all. This is obviously about Angie. <laughs> so, I want to be nosy. Yeah. I want to know. So I, I am, I'm a proud licensed agent of Transamerica and WFG Group. And <laughs> yeah, so I owe a lot of growth and a lot of game to a lot of, um, you know, a lot of personal development, a lot of growth to like you, like you're talking, you're speaking my language here. You know, when you get That's in these right. environments, this has a compounding effect and it, it only, like my life has only gotten better ever since I've been introduced to some of these concepts here. Yes, and for me, I would say the same thing. It's what the wealthy talk about. It's what the wealthy uses. All of these products are proven products that a lot of the wealthy people use and no one talks about it. Everyone gatekeeps it, but now, I guess we got to thank social media and we got to thank a lot of influencers that are out there that are finally voicing these things that, you know, no one would have ever thought. Who would have ever thought that something like a life insurance product would hold benefits like that? And, and then you start learning more about more life insurance products too, that you're like, um, I know someone had a scenario where I feel like it touched my heart because I have, I too have parents that are older, but, you know, life and in, life insurance products uh, back in the days were meant as death insurance. So when you die, they cash out, but we're finding out that a lot of people are getting like strokes, cancer, things to where, you know, they don't fully die yet, but they need living care to someone that had to be at home or strokes that, you know, they can't move at all. Who's going to pay for that? Your life insurance ain't paying for that. And we got older parents where I'm like, I don't know if I could take time out of my work to, and it sounds fucked up, right? But we, let's be realistic. You would have to take time off of your job, job, work, business, your family to care for your parent who can't get out of her bed or his bed, change diapers, help them take showers, things like that. Like you, people don't think about these things, oh. but I'm thinking I can't stop what I'm doing right now to do that. So I better set my parents up with something because I don't ever want to be vulnerable for a situation like that because chances are my savings will be depleted 100%. Really? And my business will not thrive and my goals will not be accomplished. 
So you start thinking about all these things that are within the financial industry that I was like, sign me up. I'm game. I have, it is my duty to tell everybody I know about all of these products. Thank God my man joined me. He's on here, Stephen Cruz. Thank God he joined me into this adventure because he joined before I did. Cause I was like, I have a goal. I need my real estate license. Let me do that first. Then I'll do financial services. And then he started getting all the education I'm learning. And I'm like, what the fuck? How could no one's talking about this? No one told and, me. And so starting your kids off sooner. Oh man, that'll wake you up. Because I was like, that is my language. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, you mean to tell me my kids could possibly be millionaires when they're 18 because of our contributions now? Wow. Planting that seed right now to watch that tree grow here in the next couple of years. That's right. Sign me up for that because like Teak said, there is no loss in these products. There's a floor and there's there's definitely a ceiling, you, you know. But if you guys want to know more about those things, those services, those products, reach out to me, guys. Yeah, um, how can people get in contact with you, Angie, if they wanted to learn more about what it is that you have going on, your services, loan signing, um, financial services, real estate, and just maybe we just want to connect with you, what, what could they do? Yeah, yeah, you guys can totally even call me. I'm I'm ready to talk. I could talk for days. Don't put your phone number on here. <laughs> 209-606-3155. Give me a call. We're at Limitless Financial Services all day, every day. I'm here I warned to- you. I warned you. Don't put your phone number. <laughs> People are gonna call you. Hey, I'm here to talk. If you guys want to talk about those things i'm here to help you guys all whether if if it's a personal use if it's for a personal use or if it's for business because you can also set up your business with these type of protections or if it's just like hey you know i don't want to become a a realist a realtor i don't want to become a financial service you know coach like what can i do so that i have something that's similar to your blueprint I can talk to you guys about those things and put you guys on game on how you guys can can build that. You know what I mean? So, um, uh, yeah. Angie, yeah. what's something that you want to accomplish in the next year? Wow. Oh, my goodness. My brain doesn't stop. So I'm always <laughs> constantly trying to get more and more and more things. Um. I do want to build a brokerage within um, the real estate world. Um, So building a brokerage, building a team that is definitely more than 50 in each one of my, in each one of my licenses, under my licenses. Okay. Okay. And let me see what's... Um, just growing my business, really growing my business and, and being more active with my family. Okay. Okay. Well, listen, everybody, you got a chance to listen to an amazing entrepreneur, amazing mother, amazing biz- businesswoman. And clearly this is not the end. Okay. So clearly you will hear more from her. She's going to get that social media popping once and for <laughs> all. And then her face will be everywhere. You see, she's very experienced in beauty. She's been a last, uh, not, not a last technician, but a cosm- uh, uh, cosmetologist. Um, she's definitely a financial educator, realtor. She has the whole list. Listen, if you need there to be an example, here's one right in front of you. You guys reach out to her, reach out to Angie, reach out to her team, find out more information. This doesn't stop here. Like this stuff is something that's ongoing. And, um, you know, thank you, Angie, for at least coming to our, um, our our platform and sharing your knowledge. Is there anything else that we did not discuss that you want to mention to the um, to the crowd, listen to the family, and uh, also throw that number out there once again? If Because for some people, they're not watching right now. They, they don't get a chance to actually see you. And if you guys <laughs> don't see her, she's absolutely beautiful. And she's been uh, uh, such an amazing guest. But if you're listening to this, uh, rewind it or go back to YouTube and watch it so you can see the number is displayed here. But for those people who are not watching, Angie, what can you actually, you know, what did we not discuss that you want to share 
with the family before we uh, finish off? So um, on my Instagram, there's a link tree uh, link and that has all of my links to all of my social medias, everything that has to do with real estate, everything that has to do with um, my makeup business because it's still thriving. Um, I also do wedding coordinating. I forgot to mention that I do um, on the side too. It's not fully, I'm not fully active on it, but I have got by word of mouth a lot of work with that. But um, I just want to tell everyone, thank you. Um, T, thank you for being an amazing host. And uh, Tiger, he hasn't jumped on here, but um, you know, I wanted to thank both of you guys for this opportunity because I was really, truly honored. I was like, oh my God, am I that special? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do have to- close, so you, It's always gonna be a pleasure, yeah. <laughs> I do gotta jump on my social media stuff. Um, I'm a I'm a filter addict, so you won't stop seeing filtered to the ass pictures. I'm sorry, not gonna stop that. The filters will stay on 100%. <laughs> but I mean, one thing that I could just tell everybody is to continue to um, expand your knowledge. Get you know, read more books. Surround yourself with knowledgeable people, even people that are not that don't have nothing to do with notary. Surround yourself with people who are like business connoisseurs or ad advocates or or anyone who talks about financial services. Dip into that world. I encourage you guys because I've learned so much from I'm telling you this the span of like a couple months. I've grown so much mentally into a different level that I'm, you know, I'm just so happy with myself of what I've become and what I could, the more, like what I'm going to become here in the next couple uh, more months and years or whatnot. But I encourage everybody to just network with more, more different uh, other businesses other than notary, get out there, meet more realtors, meet more title companies, meet more financial advisors, automobile insurance, you know, affiliate yourself. See, maybe they give you guys referral, um, referral, something for referring them. Um, so I, I think that's my message is just build your network um, and, and, um, and, and make it useful for yourselves, bring value vice versa to each other. Absolutely. Good, good, good message. And you're getting a lot of love in the chat, by the way. I don't know if you get a chance to see it, but Catalina says she loves what you're doing out here for your community and the world. Keep it uh -huh. up. Yeah, uh -huh. so Ruth says amazing. And, uh, you know, Stephen also uh, mentioned that it's a tax write-off. We were talking about the IULs, talking about the index and things like that. And um, Larika says her husband used to sell insurance door to door. Okay, all right. He used to, but not anymore, I guess. See, but you know, thanks. She she says thanks for this wonderful conversation. Have a great day, everybody. And uh, yeah, a lot of people are showing you a lot of love in the chat, Angie. So thanks again oh, thank for coming you. through to the Notary War Room. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. And for those people who are on YouTube, as always, my name is Tekamaku, the Angie Curio. This is the Notary War Room. You can catch us. Um, go ahead to subscribe to the uh, Tiger Toledo chat, um, Tiger Toledo YouTube, and uh, you can find me at drtech.com. Obviously, I'm Mr. Notary on Automation. I'm all about the notary business in the sense that you're approaching it like a business, not a job. So if you want to learn more about what I have going on, drtech.com, that's D-R-T-E-K-K.com, and you can uh, contact me there. Otherwise, Everybody, happy Easter. Have a great day. It's beautiful out here in California. Hopefully it's nice where you live, but we are out here. I'm going to go cut the grass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Bye, y'all. Happy Easter. Good job, Angie.